Oh. My daughter, there's no way in hell she's going there. But with my sons, I hope they have a great time. And oh, boy. Boy. With women. Alcohol poisoning. Oh, yeah. Boys One a year. A that bed. happens everywhere. That's youth. Getting pregnant <laughs> is much more harmful <laughs> than having some uncomfortable sex Hot and getting starts. mugged. The women there are human garbage whose parents don't love them. Oh. Oh. sound. Get it better every second. No time for my second guessing. Grab a mic. It's such a blessing. No time for my endless stressing. Cause there's really nothing to it. The biggest lesson in life is nothing's done until you do it. I'm gone. Now to discuss this and the wider implications of the columnist and broadcaster Milo Yiannopoulos and the journalist Rennie Edo Lodge there in our central London studios for us this evening. Very good evening to you both. Rennie, how do you feel about being called different because you're hardwired differently? Uh, I'm sure it's not something you've uh, failed to hear before. It just seems to keep cropping up. Is it necessary? It's just, it's ridiculous. It's, it's 50s thinking, you know. I mean, it's just so ridiculous, this biological determinism. Frankly, you know, interests and talent and, you know, passions for particular topics, subjects, sports, arts, whatever, like, they're not relegated to either gender. But unfortunately, because of some stereotypical thinking, often one gender is encouraged to pursue, you know, a sport or an art more so than the other. And, and actually, when you look at um, my colleague at The Telegraph, Radhika Sagani, she wrote um, a piece just this morning speaking to um, like young girls who play chess. And actually, what she found out is that they're dropping out at the age of 12, probably because you know, they're not encouraged or, you know, there's an environment around that's telling them that it's not for them, it's not cool, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, this hardwired brain stuff, like it's, it's, it's retro sexism. So Milo Yiannopoulos, does it matter if men and women are wired differently, have different skills? No, it doesn't matter in the sense that they are equal but different, but it simply isn't true to say that there is no difference whatsoever between the aptitudes of men and women. And it is um, without question true that there are some biological differences between men and women, and we know that from our anatomy. Um, but we also know it from experiments uh, that we do on young children before they've had the opportunity to be socialised, the sorts of toys that they go for. And that holds true actually for other bits of the animal kingdom as well. Some of the reason why girls drop out um, of STEM subjects at college and and uh, chess clubs is because they keep losing. And one of the reasons they keep losing is that it does seem to be the case that chess as a game plays to some of the male intellectual virtues. And when Simon Baron Cohen talks about these, he's, he, the way he describes it is um, men are good at systematizing and women are good at empathizing. And there is some reason to suppose that that may have some bio, uh, basis in biology. It's very trendy these days to say that everything is socially determined, but that's not what the science says. And it's not either what common sense says, because if it were true, these days there would be a lot more representation of women in the sciences, in astrophysics, in philosophy, in mathematics and in chess, but there isn't. So Rennie, does that, does that make sense and does, does it really matter? I mean, should we just accept that we are slightly different, have different skills, pursue them or, or should, you know, should we all be striving to be as good as each other at everything? It just, it seems really reductive, to be honest with you. I mean, if you look around at your, you know, male and female friends and families, you'll see a vast, like a huge wide variety and diversity in interests and talents and passions, right? And also I think that it's ridiculous to assume that the reason why one gender is overrepresented over in a field is because the other gender is not quite up to it. I mean, often, you know, if a, if a field is homogenous, right, which as we can see, chess is homogenous, that, that also brings with it a culture that makes things unwelcoming for people who do not quite fit the bill. Like it's, so you know, it's almost victim blaming in a way to suggest that the reason why there's an overrepresentation of a particular kind of person is because the other kind of person just isn't quite up to it. Like, it's ridiculous. If that was the case, my, you know, my, I mean, we don't live in a meritocracy, a so. It's nice, it's nice to have these sort of vague, 
waffly sort of everyone has varied interests um, what the science suggests is that for example um, when it comes to IQ IQ is distributed differently between the sexes now IQ gets a really bad rap because it's not a great indicator of some things it's said to be sexist it's said to be biased towards white people whatever um, the point is that it tests in this case it, po it tests all of the skills that make you good at chess really well it's about puzzles it's about games exactly the skills that make you good at chess make you good at IQ now the way that IQ is distributed differently in the sexes is that women tend to cluster around the mean women are more likely to have an IQ that is somewhere near the average whereas men go right to the top or right to the bottom more often which is why you get uh, great genius uh, male artists and uh, philosophers but it's also why men fill the prisons because men seem to occupy um, more of the ends of the of the IQ scale and now IQ is pretty much the best measure we have to predict whether somebody will be good at chess and it, um, what it proves and what it also proves is that men and women can talk forever it's been a pleasure talking to you both <laughs>
Last year we gave away a free handgun with the purchase of any vehicle and it went over very well. Uh, it spiked our web traffic. We sold, uh, we estimate 35 extra cars during the promotion than we normally would have. And uh, this year we're trying to sell an extra 100 cars more than we normally would. We're just trying to generate some traffic, generate some interest and enthusiasm and excitement. And it seems to work real well. Uh, you know, we, we're not just going to give people an AK-47 gun. You know, felons buy cars too. What we are going to do is we're going to give them a voucher where they can go to their local gun dealer and or we have local gun dealers we would strongly recommend where they can go buy a gun and go through the proper background checks and so that you know the guns end up in the right hands. So so how much money does it I mean how much does an AK-47 cost? I'm just curious. It, it depends. Uh, you can get a good AK-47 for $450, maybe $500. You know, some people watching this might think, you know, owning a handgun is one thing, but owning an AK-47 is something else, and maybe this is just a tad irresponsible? Uh, it's a little, little grandstanding, but how about that guy that just had him and his wife killed that had the 12 children with the seven guys coming through the door? I guarantee you he wishes he had an AK-47 as those as those maggots busted through his door and slaughtered him and his wife in front of his children. Well, but the others for guns like AK-47s is home defense. Well, but police officers are shot in the line of duty all the time, and they carry guns every day. So maybe some might not think that's a great argument. Well, I'd personally like to have a, a sporting chance instead of just becoming a victim. I guarantee you, those guys that broke through that door that used guns to kill those people did not have legal guns and did not go through the proper steps to get them. Those are all illegal guns, and I would bet my bottom dollar on it. I haven't seen the facts yet, but mm -hmm. uh, look, there's a bunch of evil in the world, and, and people need to protect themselves. We're, we're real firm believers. We, you know, we're country folks down here. We live down here, and we're real firm believers in the Second Amendment, and we don't want to become victims. When I live out in the country uh, 15 miles from the dealership here on 1,200 acres, the response time to my home is about 15 minutes. And if I'm counting on the police, and we have a great police force in Bates County, great sheriff, uh, great police in Butler where we live. It's response time still 15 minutes to how great the people are and how good their intentions are. And I would rather defend myself. The only 911 call I need is chambering around. Well, and I think that's you know the what? case I mean, I, I, I grew here. up in rural America too. We had guns in our home, but they weren't AK-47s. I mean, and, and, but, and how, but how long ago was that? When I was a teenager. What's 20 years ago, 30 well, years things ago. Have, things have changed dramatically. I don't know if you know anything about Missouri. Um, where I live in, in this county, there, there's a tremendous crime problem with people doing meth. And these people are, they, they've, they've lost their souls. Uh, they don't care about you, they don't care about me, they care about one thing, getting more dope. Well, and I understand evil wanna, in the world, but I'm just questioning the, the, the um, in a, like a semi-assault weapon to protect yourself. That's all I'm saying. Um, your motto is God, let, let guns. Me, your motto is God, Guns, Guts, and American. Um, why did you come up with that particular motto? Actually, it's God, Guns, Guts, and American pickup trucks. Because we sell cars. Right, but you include God in that. And, you know, some might wonder why God is included in a motto that it also includes guns. You don't have a problem with God, do you? No, I don't, but the combination curious. some people well, might, between God and guns, some people might have a problem with that. We're a Christian nation. Um, we're, we're a Christian people. I believe that uh, 70, 80 percent, I would guess, in this nation would classify themselves as Christians. I'd say 90 percent of the people in this country are, are believe in God, uh, whoever their God is, and to, to try and remove God from everything I think it's a no, huge no, no, mistake. that's not what I'm saying. I'm we, saying I think we, I don't putting think we God in a AK motto that also includes people. guns um, might be a little upsetting to some people. You don't think God wants us to defend ourselves? I'm, I'm confused. I, I <laughs> you know. I don't know. I, I mean, I, don't think I could God ask you the question, you know, we could do the what would Jesus do? Would he carry a gun? Uh, no, they didn't have guns back then, but I do believe he'd carry a sword if he needed it, but he was so powerful he didn't need any weapon. <laughs> that is true. Thanks so much for uh, joining us, Mr. Mueller.